Well, the Royal Court is responsible for giving me my first ever professional job with my equity card. Yeah, I, um, I was doing a one-woman show at the Edinburgh Fringe with the National Student Drama Festival. Carol Heyman came to see me, came to see the show, and offered me a job at the Royal Court with Joint Stock doing Sue Townsend's play, The Great Celestial Cow. And it was one of those sliding doors moments. I should and could have gone to the sensible life, but I threw up everything and joined the circus. So, uh, so the Royal Court was my first ever professional job. And if it hadn't been for Carol, um, I probably would have gone a completely different direction. For me, the, the Royal Court was like my unofficial training ground. It gave me my first ever professional job. It was in the era of Max Stafford Clark, who was so inspirational as an artistic director, apart from the way he directed and how much he loved actors, was just his breadth of vision and the kind of people he was bringing in. Um, and I did four plays in a row here, went from one to the other, and it did feel like home. I just moved down from the Midlands. Uh, I've got no theatrical background at all in my family. Everything was from scratch. And it felt like I did have, this was my training ground, this was my drama school almost. And I played a range of parts that, looking back now, you wonder if you get offered that same stuff again, you know, 17th century Essex deaf mute. No danger of typecasting there. My entire play was in, uh, my entire role was in sign language. It's a um, Sarah Daniels play. Um, Peruvian millionaires and serious money. I mean, you know, just a whole range of really interesting stuff and none of them pigeonholing. It was just so liberating. It's been the theatre that's consistently championed the writer and championed new writing and nurtured new writers in a way that very few other places have done with such consistency over the years. And it's just one of those places you kind of want to say you worked at because it makes you feel like, this is why I went into acting, to work at places like this. And that stage is so beautiful. The feel of it and the acoustics and even the rumble of the tube trains underneath occasionally reminding you that the world's outside. I mean, there is something, you know, I still get a little shiver when I stand on there because you feel the weight of history. You think, look back in anger onwards, you know, all happened here. I think that, that period of about five, six years where I was here constantly, there's sort of quite a kaleidoscope of memories. I mean, the, you know, the dingy dressing rooms and the sort of shabby glory of it all. <laughs> I mean, the production that really stayed with me was, was Top Girls. Just extraordinary. Um, on so many levels. The, not only the brilliance of the play and, and Max's direction, but the actors and just that feeling that, you know, you don't often get that hairs on the back of your neck that this is going to be remembered, this play is going to be remembered. It's, 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 a, it's a moment and it's happened here at the court. If the Royal Court didn't exist, I probably wouldn't have become an actress. I think we need the theatre more than ever at the moment. It's going to be a tough few years for the arts generally and it's really easy to fall back on what you think is going to keep keep things afloat. Very easy to do that. Um, whereas I think the great strength of the court is that it continues to question and it always sees the bigger picture. It tends to shake you out of complacency in the stuff it does. And I think to also totally embrace the fact we are part of a, not only a diverse multicultural society, but a really increasingly small world. We're all connected. And it isn't just about what's happening here, it's about the artistic community everywhere. And I really hope that the Royal Court keeps having that global vision as well as a very local individual vision.